Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Slam Hub Wrestling. Myself, Supreet, and this is your AEW Rampage review for January 7th, 2022. And I'm joined by Abby Maniac here. Abby, what did you think about Rampage uh, this week? Um, I, uh, if I can be brutally honest, uh, I didn't think that this was a very good show or even <clears throat> watchable to be quite honest. You know, going into the show, I thought that this show, I didn't have very big expectations. And uh, at the end, uh, it was pretty much the, I had a pretty much same you can say experience. Um, we have talked about it at length in the past that uh, recent Rampage shows have been, uh, if we compare them to the initial Rampage shows, <clears throat> they are not at par. But uh, now it seems that uh, AEW gives the money's worth with Dynamite when they tape the Rampage shows. And the Rampage shows are just a bonus. They give the money's worth with Dynamite. So this show was just another show, to be quite honest. What uh, was your opinion? I think I have to agree with you on this one regarding you know this show and uh, yeah it is it was your typical rampage but uh, i think they also were you know focusing more on the tbs debut for dynamite and uh, battle of the belts that's their main focus for this week hmm. agreed agreed and i think on that note on that note we mentioned about uh, Dynamite. Uh, what did you think about the TBS debut, man? I thought uh, overall, really great show. Some uh, like uh, Danielson, Page, another great match. Hangman, you know, retains. That solidifies him, you know, uh, you know, starting his title reign, you know, beating someone like Danielson. The TBS, you know, crowning of the new champion, a new TBS champion, sorry, the inaugural TBS champion, Jade Cargill. And uh, uh, speaking about, you know, crowning new champions, uh, we have new tag team champions in uh, Jurassic Express. And uh, it came at the expense of a horrible injury for Ray Phoenix. So well wishes for that guy as well. But overall, what did you think about that show that we saw on Wednesday? Um, I really enjoyed Dynamite. Uh, I would echo your thoughts. Uh, I really enjoyed the World Championship match and I would agree that uh, it solidifies uh, Hangman Page as the World Champion. Uh, it is uh, very difficult to, uh, you know, uh, book a solid babyface World Champion in uh, recent era, you can say. And, ala, uh, ala Biggie. Yes. <laughs> uh, I do not watch uh, WWE, so I cannot say, I cannot comment, I cannot judge. Uh, it could be, it could be. But uh, yes, it, it could be. But uh, the thing is that uh, uh, AW is trying uh, and uh, you know, hopefully in the long run they would succeed. It is easy to book a heel champion. Because you can go, you know, very, uh, you know, different ways. And a heel champion or a heel persona has a, you know, uh, you can say uh, he has or she has a, you can say freedom to say whatever he or she wants on the microphone. So it is pretty entertaining. But a baby face is a little difficult task. So how they're going with Hangman Adam Page uh, in the initial weeks, it seemed like 
it is not a very good sign for hangman adam page but now we are seeing you know as the weeks are progressing and the two bouts with brian danielson you know it is solidifying hangman adam page as a legit guy you know uh, he is not just a another guy of uh, the dark order or something like that he is a legit guy so let it would be a good you know run uh, we can hope for the best and now after seeing rampage and the rankings uh, it seems like adam cole is next in line for the world title shot and i guess it would be happening on a pay per view let's see and with regards to uh, the tbs championship finals the match was very underwhelming in my opinion and uh, you know the outcome was predictable for me and uh, uh, but nonetheless it was the right outcome the right lady one uh, jade cargill being the inaugural champion is the right way to go uh, even if the people the fans can bitch and moan and complain it is only adding to her persona she is a heel uh, it was a very mixed uh, you can say it was a very contrary move to you know show her daughter in ring side but nonetheless uh, it is 2022 and Uh, fuck k fab for the uh, professional wrestling uh, it is the you know promoters thing nowadays and uh, with regards to uh, you talked about the tag team championship uh, yes you predicted it jurassic express winning uh, it it was time and it was a great occasion you know debut on tbs and the ratings are out it was a pretty decent rating uh, i guess now on a new station in the united states i uh, want that they should uh, now uh, grow their audience they should focus on growing their audience i guess tbs has a bigger audience than tnt Yeah. so and so i guess they should now concentrate on growing their audience that's all and kudos to jurassic express for winning the championship and let's see good things uh we and i expect good things uh, from all the things that are happening it's a i guess it's a new era for dynamite for aw yeah and uh, one little shout out to the thing with cm punk and mjf you know mjf mm. uh, ate a defeat via disqualification <laughs> he lost to uh, captain shawn dean uh, and that was uh, thanks to cm punk they had a good you know verbal battle like always and uh, all things are leading towards uh, cm punk versus warlow so like i like the fact that you are building towards this eventual cm punk versus uh, mjf match and on the other hand they are planting seeds for uh, you know world low uh, like finally you know getting his hands on mjf as the dissension continues so good storytelling in my opinion yes agreed agreed absolutely agreed and uh, you know uh, you know uh, jim cornet is also uh, you know heaping praises on aw programming in recent weeks because of the very fact that what is happening on dynamite with regards to what is happening with brian danielson with cm punk with mjf these guys are carrying the boat ie of aw you know 
the promos the storytelling what they're doing is uh you can say in the long run and even if it is uh happening on social media there was a statistic that 80k subscribers uh you know per month are on the rise for aw on youtube so it is a good sign and with the guys that i just mentioned you know they are in a way adding to the audience of aw and quality programming is being dished out by these guys that i just mentioned so i guess even if we do not take uh, jim cornet's words as gospel i am also enjoying aw's programming to a very higher level when these guys are on television when brand danielson cm punk mjf are on television for me it is must see i have to watch and you spoke about the verbal battle i enjoyed the verbal battle and it took me out of my seat when cm punk uh, you know hit the gts on uh, captain sean dean i thought that what the fuck is happening is this a slow burn to a heel turn but when you know seconds passed then i uh, you know caught up that it is a disqualification finish for mjf getting a loss so then i understood but it is also adding to his eventual heel turn that i guess fans are getting you know pissed off or you can say bored with his goody shoe uh, goody good shoes persona uh, his being cm punks it will happen eventually so nonetheless i am pretty much enjoying dynamite but still you know we talked about it when rampage got on the air that they have to put effort in rampage as well right now it is just another show for them when it is taped and when it is live they give a shit but when it is taped it's, a, it's just another show for them that okay fuck that we have to tape it just that but when it is a show you are building an audience and you want your audience to care about your programming then you should i guess uh put effort you have the roster you are paying your guys you are paying andrade ridolo you are paying everybody who are featured on that show so why don't you put effort in that that being rampage it would only benefit you in the long run but it is the in the hands of the promoter but nonetheless let's talk about rampage but before that if you are new to slam of wrestling then make sure to like share subscribe do all that fun stuff check out our other content links provided in the description below so rampage here kicks off with uh, adam <clears throat> cole Bebe uh he was facing a uh, new debutant here Jake Atlas uh who was also part of NXT recently just recently so uh these two had a match the match went about almost 10 minutes uh good little showing for Jake Atlas uh, uh what was well, this your first time by the way I be checking out Jake Atlas yes Yeah, you never. I think yes. you never seen him in NXT. I assume. No. Fair enough. Fair enough. But uh, what did you think? What did you make of his performance here? Um, you know, I thought that uh, Jake Atlas looked 
fundamentally solid in the ring you know uh, in the first half of the bout uh, you know i felt that it was a classic wrestling match uh, competitive back and forth and uh, in the second half uh, j catless uh, showed that he can go to 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 uh, with adam cole uh, i e one of the best in the business right now and he also showed his athletic prowess in spite of his uh, build his body uh, amazing stuff for uh, in my opinion but the same thing uh, being over zealous and a people pleaser and showing what all can he do uh, that is you know show everything uh, you can say put everything in uh his match it went to his detriment in my opinion that he was trying for a springboard at the end and his knee gave out he just buckled and then he was unable to eat the panama sunrise and then uh, adam cole just you know he just took uh, him in a ankle lock and he got the submission victory but uh if i just uh say that his performance uh if i can analyze that he looked solid with regards to his in ring performance but he was you know uh, maybe he thought that i am on television and uh, blah 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 i have to showcase everything and i am uh, you know against adam cole and all the eyes are on me so i should showcase everything so probably that went to his detriment uh, so to speak uh, nonetheless he looked solid and i guess he has a bright future and uh, unfortunately he might be injured and be put on the shelf for a while and uh, the shame part is he recently got signed yes yes and uh, i guess he tweeted out that he won't be out uh, for long he would be back soon enough so uh, best wishes to jake atlas Uh, we heal soon yeah and uh, i want to see uh, what aw makes of him like uh, when i was seeing him in nxt he wasn't actually a pretty big deal over there he was just another guy and i think uh, the only in terms of character they try to tell his real life story i guess over there he publicly i think came out as a gay wrestler and uh, that's pretty much it mm-hmm. all right and uh, in this match i guess excalibur brushed up on the fact that he is a collegiate wrestler and something like that and adam cole and uh, he he being jay catless have been on uh, nxt those were the only things that he brushed upon but i guess that if they have signed the guy they are seeing some potential on uh, in him so let's see what happens i guess uh, something would come out of uh, this uh, and let's see let's see right now you know uh, if we talk about you know his opponent adam cole they said cole would be facing hangman adam page uh, down the line and right now i guess uh, mad jackson is out uh, he is not medically cleared so as uh, so that's why i guess they pulled the angle with the best friends post match 
I suppose. Yeah, so you were just talking about the post-match bit here where Adam Cole got in the mic uh, and uh, was about to, you know, as he was joined by Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish, Red Dragon, they were about to do a 3 one one beatdown on the injured Jake Atlas. But here comes Orange Cassidy. Uh, he had a chain. He brought a chain with him. And he was joined by uh, the rest of the best friends gang. Uh, that is Wheeler Utah and uh, Chuck Taylor as uh, the heel team uh, bailed out. So I think they still want to continue on with this story. And uh, I'm actually over this thing that they are doing uh, with the best friends. So it's time mm-hmm. uh, yeah, they moved on, moved on. I'm talking about uh, Cole, O'Reilly and Fish and whatever they do with the Young Bucks. And I want to see Adam, uh, Hangman Adam Page versus Adam Cole at Revolution. I think that makes sense in terms of, you know, Adam Cole being ranked number one in the men's ranking. Yes. Yes. Uh, I guess they would be going that way. And, uh, you know, the thing that they pulled with the best friends uh, thing that I guess that it uh, was a emergency thing and they called an audible because of uh, Matt Jackson being legit unable to compete for the time being. I guess uh, he is out for the time being. So, uh, to, you know, you can say to buy time uh, to uh, for the time being, they pulled this one again. I am over it as well. Same here. I would echo your thoughts. I am not interested in this uh, feud anymore. But they are doing this uh, to buy time. So I guess when the Young Bucks uh, are back, then uh, I guess uh, this would be done and dusted. And then we would also see that how hangman adam pages uh, thing comes into play in the said storyline of the young bucks and adam cole and red drag because that also could pose problems so it would be interesting let's see uh, what happens in the future but moving on uh... Uh, so we are uh, they made the big announcement regarding battle of the belts so Cody Rhodes uh, will not be taking part in the TNT title match against Sammy Guevara so he is being replaced by his brother that is Dustin Rhodes so uh, they are doing Dustin Rhodes versus Sammy Guevara to crown an interim TNT champion so that looks interesting and uh, going into this, I predicted Sammy getting the belt back. But imagine if uh, Dustin goes on to win TNT Championship, the interim one. <laughs> uh, I do not see that uh, going that way. But yes, I like what you are proposing here. You know, Cody Rhodes versus Dustin Rhodes was probably one of the best AW matches uh, ever in my opinion and it happened in 2019 but right now there is not much uh, you can say uh, emotion or you can say substance right now into that story so I don't think that Dustin would be winning the championship right now. I guess Gowara would be winning. And also, you know, uh, I didn't uh, check out Rampage last week. So I went to YouTube and I saw the highlights of uh, Ethan Page versus uh, Cody Rhodes for the TNT Championship. I guess it was on Rampage, if I'm not wrong. It was on Rampage. Uh, Yes. So, uh, it felt 
very you know awkward at times because of the uh, you can say the clash of persona between the two you know the thing is that both the guys are heels cody roads is uh moving towards you can say there is a slow burn towards being a heel and ethan page is an established heel so it was very difficult to you can say execute the match right then and ethan page also has the uh, the manager as uh, dan lambert in his corner so that also makes it all the <coughs> uh excuse me all the more difficult to you know go in that road uh, for cody upon not intended if he is uh, moving towards being a heel a legit heel not a cool heel so i guess uh this would be a better thing that uh, guara wins the interim championship and then i guess later in the show we saw a, a backstage promo with dan lambert and uh, men of the year so i guess now scorpio sky is gunning for the championship so i guess Guevara versus Scorpio Sky is happening in the uh, near future. Have you noticed Scorpio Sky would won? Yes, yeah. yes, please. Have you noticed that Scorpio Sky has been chasing after the TNT Championship since last year? <laughs> uh, really? Yeah. Uh, like uh, go back. and remember he won the face of the revolution ladder match then he got a title yes. shot against darby allen he then went cold for a while i think he was uh, he got a yet another tnt title shot in if i'm not wrong or he was just asking for it when they were doing the inner circle and american top team thing and now man of the year yes i think even ethan page has got in uh, several tnt dial shots so it you can say that it's been a long term thing for him so i don't mind if they put the belt on him uh but they won't you know because uh eventually it is going to be you know cody roads versus the interim champion to crown the undisputed tnt champion and then cody would be winning and if they crown you know if we are taking your word or taking your uh, you know uh, suggestion uh, that uh, scorpio sky is crowned the champion then the same problem which happened with the ethan page cody roads match that would arise then also that heel versus heel <coughs> excuse me and then uh, the same thing would happen that they are trying to uh, give a slow burn to cody roads this heel turn that is the main focus so they would not want uh, any obstacle to that so i guess guara would be winning when uh, he would face uh, scorpio sky and uh, you know booking scorpio sky if you are saying that it has been a long thing long uh, you know road long journey then it feels like a desic that uh, they are just using scorpio sky for the sake of uh, you know this thing that we can book scorpio sky for the tnt championship thing we can book him then he can lose and then he can uh, 
do his thing and then blah 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 and then he can come again he can challenge once again but when is his movement the, the there is nothing to be seen for him we could have seen something with the tag team championship or something like that but there is nothing to be seen right now there is nothing for now i guess he was the uh, tag team champion uh, with yeah, scu yeah. but yes with scu but right now uh i do not see anything he can be with ethan page but there is a long way to go right now we just had new champions but let's see let's see if something comes about but tnt champion right now would be cody rhodes for the i guess for a long time as of now he also just won the champion yeah yes yeah. and if it's a long title run then uh, we don't mind it yes i suppose but uh, i guess uh they can do uh, something you know when it is the you can say an official stamp for the heel turn when they want to do that they can uh, pose Cody Rhodes against Hangman Adam Page, and Cody Rhodes uh, goes against his word uh, that he doesn't want to, uh, that he will never challenge for the world championship, and he goes against his word. Then uh, something could, uh, you know, happen, and it would further solidify. hangman page as a world champion hangman would be winning then cody rhodes i don't know we we'll have to Percy. wait and see we we'll have to wait and see but yes. um, moving on uh, uh, we had an interview yes. with, we had an interview with andrade el idolo he was talking about uh, him you know getting involved in uh, you know the you could say uh, like he kind of assisted the acclaim to you know beat down sting and darby allen on last week's rampage and uh, he just said that uh, i think he is wanting andrade is wanting assistance of sting and darby allen no he j- he is just wanting darby allen and he is asking sting that what is his price <laughs> oh that's the case <laughs> like he you i think he was he was even questioning uh when did sting became darby yes. allen's manager something like that yes. tony shivani had to come yeah. no 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 they are not manager assistant anything like that they, they are just best friends yes yeah <laughs> this is again they are going back you know uh, when andrade was uh, talking to pack for lucha bros now he is talking in a way indirectly to sting for darby allen this is fucking lackadaisical in my opinion you know <clears throat> we saw uh, andrade you know mixing it up with the likes of cody rhodes malakai black ftr and you know the said people you know we understand the thing that you know it was you know lack of you know uh, time and something like that and you know they disbanded the whole thing understandable but now they are going back again and now only the people are changed but the mindset of andrade is the same he is just asking for an assistant uh, or quote and quote slave so to speak in darby allen in my opinion it is like a disciple nothing nothing different to uh, for the audience to sink their teeth into to actually care 
do you care right now do you care i am asking you is about there andrade something interesting right now? about andrade or yes, story yes and e- andrade and also the story is there anything different is there anything interesting uh nope andrade right now is i can say it's <clears throat> pretty cool right now yes agreed and you know we when we talked about andrade when he debuted we had so much expectation so many expectations with the guy and we also or maybe uh, i guess you talked about uh, so many <clears throat> i guess scenarios with the likes of uh, the guys in new japan pro wrestling that he has a history but there is nothing you know there is also you know rick flair but you know things happen uh, blah 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 but right now we are not seeing anything creative quote and quote with this guy are the creative or the promoter you know are they spent with the creativity for andrade w- uh, what is the problem uh i don't know i think they have given him tv time enough of it like but uh, there is co- questionable things regarding booking wise you know he was involved in that cody roots you know thing that they did and that was a very yes. multi multi man feud like everyone was getting involved you know ftr malika i like you know the whole deal but yes. uh, overall is feeling little cold there hasn't been anything breakout regarding him and he is not being yes. featured as a top you know something to look for or to guy in aw yes and you know uh, the thing is that we know how talented he is in ring so the only thing that is you can say holding the guy back is give the person the story the substance to uh, you know sink our teeth into for the audience it's something like that so go another way this thing with the assistant uh, or you know uh, going you know something like that that you want andrade versus darby allen understandable but go another route have some creativity that the fans also care about it uh we would care about uh, or we would enjoy the match understandable but how would you make the fans invested that is the question you are two years or two years plus old year company your digital soldiers or trolls or whatever they would eat everything up understandable but if there is something creative that would grow your audience that is what i am saying so brainstorm come up with something come up with something creative for the guy which also helps the guy in the long run that is what i am saying that you won't have to uh, you know go to the same thing or you know go different routes and then go back to the same thing you choose one thing and then you go in the long route you go long term have one plan go long term you will have to put effort that is what is missing put effort brainstorm have an idea go long term that is what is missing for the guy otherwise he is talented 
in the ring no question about it only thing is have a plan for the guy story or the character we'll have to wait that was see. a problem in in a, uh, in wwe as well i guess if i am not wrong same issue i guess coming here in aw yeah yes so uh, if you have you know employed the guy or you know you are working with the guy what different you uh, what difference you have if you are you know thumping your chest and uh, you know uh, talking to the masses like we are different we are a w and this is this and you know we are a you know two year old company so show that you know sh- show that and you know put effort in that if you make andrade a star you would be different you have done justice to the guy if you give him the you know the character and the thing that was missing there in wwe that's all but moving on uh, let's talk about the main event uh we have aaron solo facing uh, <laughs> hook <laughs> the crook <laughs> hook was on tv this is hook time and uh wait, this was this went about what 3 minutes story here was that uh, hook was actually the student of qt marshall you know during his days in the nightmare factory and you, we had qt marshall taking all the credit for hook's recent success and even taz was later you know pissed off regarding the fact that you know uh, it was actually the team taz dojo that you know actually built hook but nonetheless we had this match uh, crowd super into hook and uh, aaron solo actually got in some you know shots here and there was on the offense and uh, got that you know heat as bully ray terms it from the crowd you <laughs> uh, <laughs> also had qt marshall you know uh, at one point getting involved so hook was you know doing his usual hook stuff you know locking in submissions throwing aaron solo Uh, from one corner to the another and you now the bunch of suplexes we see and at the end uh, he locked in a cross face and uh, the finisher or oh, sorry the submission the red drum to get the submission win and there you go and uh, a little post match action with QT Marshall getting into the face of hook but uh, it was a bad idea as hook launches qt marshall it's a t bone suplex or the exploder exploder whatever you call it and there you go at least uh, they are giving me a reason to check out rampage on what hook's going to do this week am i right hmm. yes agreed 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 absolutely uh you know hook has become uh, as you just said you know one of the most talked about entities in the sport today you know uh, when you know i guess it was 3 weeks or 4 weeks ago when he made his debut uh, you know this thing is only regarding what we do here you know our uh, we do uh, rampage reviews so when i shared uh, hook uh, hook's debut match reaction on various social media handles of mine it got a very uh, you can say a better reaction than the you can say a typical you know review post people want to know the guy people want they are curious about the guy and you know we have talked about it at length that you know 
they are curious and they are fans of the guy he has a cult following now and we also uh, you know he is the number one seller on pro wrestling tv shop aw with his merchandise and he is being booked by the looks of it as a baby face even if he is a member of a quote unquote heel faction uh which is questionable but nonetheless and he is keeping a you can say a safe distance from the fellow faction members as well so right now it is good right now with regards to also uh, uh, if we talk about his character it is right now uh, flawless that and you also brushed upon the fact that he ate offense in this match and he then came back that also gets uh the fans invested with regards to his character and he kept his composure when he was eating offense he kept his composure he kept his cool his calm and overall he was technically and fundamentally sound another great outing for hook and like you i am enjoying his work there's nothing else to say and it seems like probably he would be facing qt marshall i guess next week it seems mm it looks like they're going that way yes but uh, there yeah. you go man uh moving on from uh, the hook thing uh, we had a small highlight regarding the uh what, what was that the street fight between uh, Anna J Tigonti and uh, Bunny and uh, Penelope Ford yes so yes. did you like that match by the way um i didn't watch the whole match i saw the highlights i saw that uh, people talked about the match at length on social media i checked out the highlights on uh, the official youtube channel of aw uh <clears throat> jim cornet talked about the match he said that it was a garbage hardcore match in his words obviously and he said that the ladies are not you know quote and quote uh, fundamentally sound wrestlers so the promoter put them in a hardcore wrestling match so as to please the audience so they did great with regards to the stipulation in his words uh, and uh, it was enjoyable and if uh, you are talking about what i thought of the match with regards to the highlights that i saw i guess that uh, it was an enjoyable street fight uh, to i guess the uh, the feud is still ongoing it uh, because the thing is that you have to feature the ladies the four ladies that were involved and it put over in a way the the bunny ali because of the fact that she got color in the match and also you know the toughness of all the ladies involved with the weapons and uh, the things that happened and uh, yes it was entertaining uh, i guess such a match should put a full stop to whatever feud that is happening in my opinion but they are still ongoing because of the fact that they want to feature the ladies so right now they have to you know uh, feature them on television in a way so they are prolonging 
the said feud so okay uh, nonetheless i whatever i saw in the highlights i i enjoyed uh, i i liked i i liked that's all uh, what was your opinion regarding the match uh i think much uh, i thought it was good uh, not a big fan of hardcore matches as uh, feels like it is over done in the past couple of years mm mm-hmm. but uh, mm-hmm. overall you know uh, i have to say kudos to all four ladies to you know going through that match and uh, turn out to be good i guess but uh, as we mm. move on with rampage uh, they did a you could say a random women's tag match here with ruby soho and rio so they are facing jamie ater and uh, dr brit baker dmd and uh, nothing much it was just you can call it a preview for what's going to happen at battle of the belts regarding the women's championship match that is between brit baker and rio so nothing much i guess as uh, in- instead uh, there was one thing that was intriguing is that uh, they are continuing on with this dissension you could say with uh, brit baker and jamie hater like there was some you know they uh, i could i like there was this one spot at the end where jamie hater accidentally was about to you know hit brit baker yes so i think this led to you know uh, she hit she was not uh... no uh, she hit i guess with the i guess rolling forearm if i'm not wrong so something happened in this match i actually don't remember mm. and this actually caused them this match as uh, riho yes. got a surprise roll up on uh, jamie hater and there you go so like i said a preview for the battle of the belts match and uh, yeah they're still trying to tell this you know story of maybe in the future you could see Jamie Hayter uh, Brit Baker you know the dissension happen and they start feuding with each other hmm yes yes i i i think uh, that it would be happening in the near future i guess once this uh, probably when uh, this match at battle of the belts gets done with riho then i guess probably they can do that or if they are going the a little long with the slow burn so i guess we can see the the match between the two ladies uh probably at the pay per view uh i don't know You are you are talking about Let's Jamie see. you are talking about J- uh, Jamie Hayter and Brit Baker Yes yes uh you know the thing is that this spot uh in the reverse also happened uh in the TBS tournament when Jamie Hayter was going i guess she had a match against uh Riho? Ruby Soho Ah okay I guess Ruby Soho so then brit baker cost uh jamie hater the match by indulging in the bout so it is a slow burn to an eventual showdown between the two so let's see when they are going uh, with the eventual showdown does it happen at the pay per view does it happen at a special dynamite let's see when it happens but uh, I, th- i think if you do jimmy eater and brit baker i think brit baker has to drop the title first um <clears throat> mm, i don't know if this uh, that if brit baker is dropping the title anytime soon uh, i guess jamie hater would only become fodder to the title reign i guess it would only solidify 
Britt Baker as the champion. Uh, she would this, have a lengthy title. Yeah, at this point, uh, yeah, let this story just you know breathe for a while, and then mm. you know we we'll get to the conclusion. Just you know stretch mm. it out, be a long term thing. And meanwhile, the meat of the matter is Britt's title run. So I think it's coming to its closure in a couple of you know months. Or who knows, will she even be champion come Revolution? Because Thunder Rosa is just getting ready to, you know, eventually, you know, get back to the Britt Baker stuff. And she's definitely taking out the title. Mm. If that is what is about to happen. But right now, she is, uh, she being Thunder Rosa is uh, involved in a predicament with uh, Mercedes Martinez, I guess. So, I guess first she needs to take care of that and then it would progress to that uh, eventual showdown with Britt Baker. If you are talking that uh, Britt Baker versus Thunder Rosa is happening at revolution if it is in the plan we'll have, see. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see regarding that but uh, let's get through, get through this main event uh, this is a what was this actually a street fight or a false god anyway uh, this was basically no rules no disqualification trios match basically a no holds barred Yes, yes. So, this was uh, between Santana, Ortiz <coughs> and Eddie Kingston. They were facing Daniel Garcia and 2.0. So, uh, the main event interview bit with Mark Henry actually was you know, cut short as the baby faces were not interested, you know, giving their comments and uh, they got into the fight and there was no entrances as match it was underway we got you know the usual weapons being introduced trash cans all um, six men were fighting outside for the most parts in the crowd in the backstage area and uh, as we get to the final part it was a sudden you could say finish as uh, proud and powerful uh, i think they hit some finisher i guess on one of the 2.0 members yes it was i guess a assisted uh, i guess manhattan drop in ziguri combination something and uh, i was surprised with the, that it it got the victory i was very much surprised yeah but the problem was uh, we were not that you know <clears throat> interested in this match and we didn't even realize the finish game. <laughs> uh, I would agree. I would agree. I would agree. But there you go. Uh, that was it for a while as the baby faces were celebrating. But uh, little post match action here. I think Matt Lee uh, had, uh, was uh, low blowing every one of the baby face team here. And this prompted Jericho to leave commentary and, uh, you know, uh, even up the odds as uh, the baby faces stood, uh, you know, stood tall. And uh, there you go. That was it. And I'm just waiting for Eddie Kingston to get on the mic and uh, destroy Jericho. <laughs> Uh, I guess same here, <laughs> same here. Uh, you know, this is looking like a fucking, uh, like you just said, you know, we weren't interested in this. You know? And, you know, so many street fights is only, you know, watering down the concept of uh, watching a street fight or a no disqualification match. If you have such a match every week, just for the sake of it, uh, that, you know, getting the fans, you know, uh, pop a rating or it is, I guess, you know, 
lackadaisical. You know, you could have had a much better, you know, storytelling, and then you such matches are a end to a feud. In in my opinion, they do not, you know, make a you know such a match uh, a. you know an interim to such a few i do not understand and uh, you know uh, i guess someone uh, some expert i do not uh, remember who probably cornet or probably someone else he i guess it was someone else he uh, pointed out that why was the program involving cm punk and eddie kingston not prolonged yes now i remember it was uh, eric bishop it was eric bishop uh, he was i guess on uh, k100 podcast with conan uh, he said that why was the program involving uh, eddie kingston and cm punk not long that it got uh, concluded within a span of 2 to 3 weeks or uh, 2 weeks in my opinion uh, why was that and why didn't uh, eddie kingston brush up on the said fact afterwards he never even spoke about that and you know the said story his words his words being uh, eric bischoff's words that uh, the said story the said feud had so much substance to it it was real animosity or real it had so much to it they could have used it and they could have made the fans invested it could have led to the growth of the audience and we also talked about it at length we also didn't want uh, i guess i brushed upon the fact that probably two weeks are uh, less in my opinion for the said feud so they could have used the said feud and they could have stretched the feud for a long time so as to make the fans invested have compelling stories and have compelling content on television and now we are seeing kingston involved in what now i think basically with- I think with Jericho now, another top guy. Yes, another top guy. But the fact is that right now we are seeing what the the road to that feud or the road to that match. They are using they. I, I mean, uh, the company AW. They are using Eddie Kingston. as you know the fact uh, as a guy that he you know he can dish out on the microphone he can dish out on the microphone he can get you invested but then uh, against top guys of the company whether it's Cody Rhodes whether it's uh, CM Punk whether it's now i as you just said probably Chris Jericho but then he loses and then he doesn't talk about that afterwards then moving on to the next and also john moxley john moxley same thing happened getting the fans invested brilliant promos have the match lose next so where did it you know get him that is a question that did it get him over 
that is the question if we had a longer time to uh, for the said feud or feuds it could have gotten him over that is probably the complaint or the suggestion that is the thing mm, so you have an opportunity to actually get kingston a big win against jericho you have but will you they have to will you book that guy they have to the fact is that the fans will say so you will say so i can say so but we don't uh, if we take the track record if we take everything of the past we can say with probably a big certainty that it won't be happening right now it would happen in the distant future when he is pretty much probably uh, very over with the crowd so to speak or something along those lines but right now i don't know right now if i am seeing uh, like you pointed out that jericho and uh, eddie kingston is about to happen uh i don't know uh i see that jericho would be winning in some shape or form and jericho is a le- is the leader of the top faction the first faction of this company so will he put eddie kingston over Mm, I think he should because he will not get anything with getting this way. We can wish for the best. Yeah, as of now, he Kingston should just open his mouth and just destroy Jericho. That's when he'll you'll let again be the most over guy in the company again. Hmm. Yes. We hope for the best and if Kingston wins let's see let's see what happens. But that was rampage and uh, before we leave where can these guys find you? Guys you can connect with me on Instagram and Twitter at Abi Maniac, and you can also connect with me on Facebook and LinkedIn as well. And you can find Slam Up Wrestling on Twitter at Slam Up W, Instagram at Slam Up Wrestling. You can catch this review on Anchor and Spotify as well. This was the AEW Rampage review, and we'll see you guys next time.